And I'm going to go over just a few announcements, if that's okay with everybody. So the first announcement that I have for today is simply a reminder that because the 5th District mid-year meeting begins um, officially on Tuesday the 14th, I will not have office hours this week because I will be in Los Angeles. I, I fly out on Monday and I fly back on, on Friday. Um, but if you need to reach me, I can still be reached by my cell phone. Um, let's see, other announcements for things that are coming up. Um, in talking to the steward board, we've been thinking about some things that we used to do that we could reclaim. Um, and one of the things that I grew up doing is on Easter Sunday, folk got to do Easter speeches and they did special prayers. Um, and so I reached out to a, a friend of mine and she gave, and she's a Christian education guru. And she gave me a whole bunch of little speeches and things. And there is one um, that is based on Jesus loves me that I was thinking we could do as a choral poem that different people could say the different verses. And then we could have different people sing the Jesus loves me part, or you can even say it, but here's the hook. Instead of saying, for the Bible tells me so, it says, because e the Easter story tells me so. so. So that's the difference. If you are interested in participating in that service, um, Easter is April 9th. Um, let me know, and I can give you a part. I promise if you um, participated in the Advent service, the readings aren't even that long. Um, and then, you know, if there's somebody who wants to do the morning prayer that day, I have a special prayer for Easter that somebody can do. Um, that's just our way of reclaiming some stuff that some of us grew up doing and then putting a newish twist to it, okay? Um, let's see, what other announcements do I have? Um, also, one other reminder, next Sunday, April the 19th, is Purple Sunday for Alzheimer's Awareness all over the entire AME Church. And I'm asking everybody to wear purple next Sunday. Um, and I'm gonna get a picture of us after church um, so that we can celebrate Purple Sunday, but also remind ourselves of the challenges that our loved ones face who deal with the challenges of Alzheimer's, as well as those who don't have the condition, but have loved ones who have the condition. Um, it, it transforms your life. Um, so we'll be doing that focus on, on April 19th. Also that same Sunday at 2 p.m., Bethel AME Church in Leavenworth, Kansas is doing their Usher Day concert. Those of you who'd like to go with me, um, definitely me and my daughters will represent St. Luke uh, and Rebecca is going to represent St. Luke um, for the ushers. Let me see. What else did I forget? I'm, I'm pretty sure I forgot stuff. Um, weaving in, getting ready for Holy Week in April. Palm Sunday is the first Sunday in April. So we will have palms on Palm Sunday uh, it's also a newish twist on a traditional um, Palm Sunday. How many of y'all remember back in the day when we had live palms? We're not going to have live palms this year. They're going to be artificial, but they're going to look like the live palms. They're not going to just be, be the palm crosses or just the one stalk of the palm. We're going to have full palms. They're just going to be artificial. And that allows us to reuse them. A good way for us to celebrate Palm Sunday and also respect, respect the planet. Um, so, so those are our announcements. Um, I think that's everything that, that's coming up um, real soon. Just a reminder, please continue to keep Eugene Hunter lifted up in prayer over the loss of his sister. Um, I don't have the funeral arrangement information, but as soon as I get that, um, for those of you who have email, I will email that out to you. Um, and those of you who don't have email, call folk who you know don't have email. 
um, folk who have email, you know folk who don't have email, call them up and give them the information, please. All right. Um, that should cover most of our announcements. I, I can't think of anything else, um, but I would like to turn everything over to um, our youth and our young adult Sunday school classes. And we're gonna invite them right now to give us our Sunday school reports. We are going to start with um, Virginia. Denver, can you tap your sister and let her know it's her turn to do her Sunday school report? All right, Virginia, get your book together and get ready to share your Sunday school report with us. Um, by the way, the lesson for today is all about us highlighting the potential and the gifts and graces of children in the church. Um, so Virginia, can you grab the microphone so everybody can hear you? The wonder of childlike qualities. All right. Uh, what are some of the highlights from the lesson for you? Like, what was your key verse? That Jesus said, "Whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven." Well, wait, wait a minute. Jesus told a whole bunch of grown-up disciples who were looking to see who the greatest was that the greatest in the kingdom of heaven had to be like a kid. Uh, what do you think are some kid-like qualities that Jesus thinks that even adults should have? All right. Anything else from your lesson that you want to share with us today? No. Yeah. All right, can you pass the microphone to your sister? And she can give us the teen young adult class report. Start off with the title for us, Denver. Okay, the title of the lesson was The Child is Greatest in the Kingdom. And pretty much what the lesson is about is like Jesus coming over a bunch of people and saying that like we should be like children in our belief of God being Christ. And what he pretty much means by that is that like kids, we should be open to new experiences and just be innocent to uh, new experiences. Christ. All right. Is there a difference between being childlike and being childish? Yes. What's the difference between being childish? Well, being childish is being like immature and not really listening. And being childlike is being able to listen and adapt to that information. Okay. One of the twists on your lesson, which is similar to what will come up in the adults lesson, is also a warning about not putting stumbling blocks in front of children or other people in the church who, who might need a little extra help. So what were some things that could be a stumbling block that we talked about for people? Um, 
meeting really new people in this church that I never met before. Okay, so if if you're meeting new people and you've never met them before, if you're both welcoming to each other, is that a stumbling block or is that a way to take a stumbling block down? Absolutely. All right. In, anything else you want to add? Or are we good? Okay. Awesome. Um, I want to thank both of the girls for sharing their Sunday school lesson highlights and tidbits with us. Um, the adults don't always get to do their Sunday school lesson after church, but every time the young folks give us a tidbit of what they learn, it gives us, uh, oh, I don't know what, what you would call it. I, it, it. It gives us the Cliff Notes version of the Sunday school lesson. So thank you very much for that. All right, as we prepare to shift into our worship service, I want to go ahead and highlight um, some of our order of service. So we're gonna start today with our doxology. After our doxology, we're going to go into the call to worship, which is responsive and printed in your order of service. Um, for our opening song today, I wanna go old school. Y'all ready? I wanna do hymn 25. And when I say old school, I mean old school. This is holy, holy, holy. Um, then we'll do the morning prayer. We'll do a prayer response. Our scriptures for today will be Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, and Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Then we'll go into the summary of the Decalogue. And we'll finish that off with the Gloria Patri. We'll do our first selection, which just might be Jesus loves me, because why not? He does. Um, and then we'll do our altar call, our tithes and offering, and we'll figure out what the sermonic selection is when we get there, okay? All right, then we'll go into the message, our invitation to discipleship and decision time. We'll do our closing doxology and our closing benediction, amen? Let's stand for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Amen. Blessed, uh, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You may take your seats. And as you do so, if you could grab your hymnal and open it up to page 25, we are going to sing this old traditional hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to be Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, 
God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our soul shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, asking thou prayer, O God, thou shalt cherubim and seraphim. Rolling down before me, which words and art and evermore shall be holy, holy, holy. to know that we serve a holy God who is interested in a people who aspire to be holy. Amen. Let's pray. Wonder working, all loving God, Lord God, Lamb of God, we love you, we praise you, and we magnify your holy name. We, we, we ask, oh God, that you would bless us, that you would strengthen us, that you would encourage us, but most of all, that you would show up in this space and in this place and among this people so that when we leave, we don't leave the same way we came. Lord God, you're welcome to have your way in us. If you find anything that's in us that's not of you, you're invited to replace it with your joy, with your peace, with your hope, with your salvation, with your faith, with your power, with your comfort. Just have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Sweet Sweet, sweet, that calls me. 
this moment, it's time for our scriptures. And the first scripture for today um, from the Old Testament comes from Exodus chapter 17. And I'm going to read verses one through seven. Um, I'm reading it from the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. Exodus chapter 17, verses one through seven. When you have that, say amen. Yeah. Won't you listen for the word of God? From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Then the New Testament lesson comes from the book of Romans chapter five, verses one through 11. That's Romans chapter five, verses one through 11. When you have that say amen, um, I'll also read it from the New Revised Standard Updated Edition. Listen for the word of God. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Yeah. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, 
Now, perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners, still Christ died for us. Much more surely, therefore, since we have now been justified by his blood, we'll be, be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, through the death of his son, much more surely having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Church, this is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God. Amen. Um, our summary of the Decalogue is this. Jesus summarizes everything from the law and the prophets. That would be everything in the Old Testament from the book of Genesis to the book of Malachi. And he says, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, because it's the first and the great commandment. But the second one is just like it. You and I, we have to learn to love our neighbors just like we love ourselves because on these two commandments depend every law and every prophet. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without it. Amen. Amen. So full disclosure, church, before I memorize any Bible verses, or anything like that. My first exposure to the God who loves, to the God who sees, to the God who cares, to the God who saves, to the God who comforts, was Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. So if y'all can indulge me, would, would, would y'all indulge me? Can we tap into our inner child today? And if you could just, if you don't remember all the words to this song, or if you don't even know it, if you would open up page 549 in your hymnal, it's actually in there. I, I don't know about y'all. I had a teddy bear that played it when I was a little kid. Um, my oldest had a teddy bear that played. My youngest had, had a bunny because she got hers at Easter. Um, and, and, and I also had a blanket that had the lyrics to Jesus loves me on it. So, so I don't know about you. That, that was my first exposure to the love of the good God. So, so how about we sing that together? 549. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He who died, heaven's gates to open wide. 
one more time because I like that part. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. So, here we are at a moment in the service where we get to acknowledge the love of this God who cares so much for us that he died for us, he lives for us, and every now and again, he reminds us how precious we are to him. I don't know about you, yesterday there was rain, rain, and more rain. And today the sun is like, hi, how y'all doing? <laughs> that, that's just another reminder that yes, Jesus loves us. So this is that moment in the service where you have an opportunity to talk with the one who loves you best. It's altar call time. You have the option of coming to the altar and praying at the altar or praying in your seat. But, all, but by all means, Take this opportunity to spend a little time with Jesus. The altar is open. Will you come? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim the kingdom will all pass away, but there's something 
God, we thank you for a name that is sweet. We thank you for a name that holds power. We thank you for a name that reminds us that you save, that you heal, that you restore and you renew. So now, oh God, we invite you to hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is another moment in the service where we all have a chance to participate. This is the moment for our tithes and offerings. And you can participate um, in one of several ways. You can give traditionally by placing your offering in the offering plate. You can also give via your bank through Zelle Pay to St. Luke AME Church, look for our email address. Um, you can give through Givelify, look for ST Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, if you're with us virtually, you can also mail it in to our address or you can stop by the church and place it in our mail slot. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful that you provide us with more than enough. And we ask, oh God, that you would accept these, our gifts of tithes and offerings, and allow it to be used for your kingdom building. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. No matter how you try, the more you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving because it's really true that you can't be God's giving. No matter how you try. Amen. Let's stand and sing all things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O and of thine own have we given thee. You may be seated. For our sermonic selection today, um, we are going to say, Yes, Jesus loves me. Yeah, I know we sang that one already. We're going to do it again. <laughs> See, some of y'all are like, what the pastor do? If we sing it the same song we just saw. I like that one. So can, can y'all indulge the pastor? And, and we just go sing. We just go sing the refrain of Jesus loves me. We just go keep singing it, 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 it until I'm ready. All right. All right. Yes. Jesus loves me 
Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Um, I wanted us to sing that one more time because the truth is way too many of us have experienced moments in our lives where we were pretty sure that nobody loved us. It, 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 at least it felt like it. It looked like it. It sounded like it. It smelled like it. Every last one of our senses suggested to us that if we were loved, well, we couldn't be experiencing what we were experiencing. We, we couldn't be experiencing the grief we were experiencing. We, we couldn't be experiencing the, the health challenges we were experiencing. We, we, we couldn't be experiencing watching our parents age and, and become fragile when, when we thought that could never happen. We, we, we couldn't even imagine watching our children who we just knew would outlive us struggle with health and joy and gladness. I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm just being real with y'all. Uh, uh, we couldn't have imagined that after in investing most of our life at a particular job that we would get laid off and get a pink slip. I'm, I'm gonna be real for, for all of those people who were in the tech industry who when everybody else in every other industry in, in the world had layoffs, all of a sudden folk in big tech are getting pink, pink slips. And if you're wondering why you had issues like our internet got glitchy, you, you ever had some tech in, issues in the last couple of weeks and you wonder why it's so hard for you to get them fixed because most of them got pink slips. And I don't know about you, if you knew you were getting a pink slip, how, how many of you would have not necessarily set stuff in motion so that everything could run smoothly even when you were no longer there? How, how many of us might have been, might have been of the mindset, well, if you're gonna fire me, you can figure everything out on your own. Now, in, in, in times like these and in moments like these, it can feel like we are insignificant and that we don't matter, but we serve a God who says, I love you. I see you. I hear you. And I've got plans for you that may not look like they're as wonderful as they are but I know the plans I have for you, plans to bless you and not to harm you, plans to lift you up and to strengthen you. And so, yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me so. Okay, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to go directly into the sermon. So thank you y'all for indulging me. Uh, between Sunday school and my devotions for the last couple of days, I've been tapping into my inner child um, and, and I think every now and again, it's, it's, it's good to tap into your inner child because children like to have some joy. Every now and again, it's good to tap into your inner child because children can see the positive when there's only negative. Every now and again, it's good to tap into your inner child because there's something that God does in and through children that way too many of us who have been around for a little bit longer ignore. So if you would indulge me, I'd like to focus on the story of another child. If you would open up your Bibles to 
1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read verses 38 through 50 from the New Living Translation. And it may be familiar to some of you. Um, it's the story of this shepherd boy named David who goes up to fight this Philistine giant named Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17, beginning at the 38th verse and concluding with the 50th verse from the New Living Translation. Won't you listen for the word of God? Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruby faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that, that you come at me with a stick. And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, not, by, not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine and on, with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. If you're looking for a title, God requires a different kind of champion. God requires a different kind of champion. Um, I'm sure y'all have figured out I kind of like music. Um, and when I was a little girl, uh, around the time that the movie Rocky came out, this music group called Queen put out this song. We are the champions, we are the champions. That's all I knew as a little girl. That was the hook of the song, right? Um, there, there, there's a whole lot more to the song. It, it talks about being the underdog and, and, and being counted out and, and how it turns out that you can still be the champion. Um, but, but one thing about the song is very similar to what's happening in this text for us today. People assume that champions look a certain way. People assume that champions act a certain way. People assume that if you're going out to fight a giant like racism or sexism or, or, or health inequality or income inequality or homelessness or joblessness, whatever the giant is, they assume that if you're going to fight a giant and be successful, you also have to be a giant or at least you got to be trained to be a warrior. 
clearly that's what King Saul thought. Because when David volunteered to be the champion, Saul put the king's armor on a shepherd boy. Now, what kind of sense does that make? A king that's grown with, God, with grown children, why would that man think that a 14-year-old teenager could wear his armor, let alone know how to work it? It was because he assumed that if David was going to be the champion, that David had to be a soldier in armor and had to fight a certain way. And of course, Goliath, come on, he was a giant. And he came out in armor. He came out with a sword. He came out with a spear. And he also came out with a helper who would hold his extra equipment. That's what an armor bearer is, y'all. I, I, I know in, this, in these modern days where we see armor bearers, we see people holding preachers' Bibles and robes and stuff, and, and we assume that's what an armor bearer is. Really, all an armor bearer is supposed to do is hold your extra stuff just in case you need it. Um, and it's also supposed to be a way that they train to eventually take your place. Um, that ain't how we use armor bearers today. Today we use armor bearers like, like, like they just are lackeys who get to do what we need to do. That's a whole nother conversation. Um, so, so Goliath has all this armor and he's big. And, 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 and he also has somebody to hold his extra equipment, right? So he expects that if the Israelites are going to have a champion, because in this instance, in order for the two nations not to have to duke it out as, in, as entire nations, what they do is they select somebody who will represent the whole entire nation. Goliath happens to be the biggest, the baddest, the strongest, the nastiest, the meanest in the whole entire Philistine army. So it makes sense that they would pick him as, as their champion, right? David is the youngest son of Jesse. He's about 14 years old. And he heard sheep. The way he ends up becoming the champion is that his daddy sends him to the front lines with a meal for a few of his older brothers. And he gets to the front line and Goliath is talking all that stuff. Y'all ain't nothing. Your God ain't nothing. We can take all of y'all. It don't matter. Y'all can send 20 against me. I got you because our God's got your God. And David's like, hold up, wait a minute. Who this person? Did he just disrespect the Lord of Lords and the God of Gods? Oh, why why, why y'all cringy? Why y'all so scared? Did you just see what he did? He just respected God. We got to do something about this. We got to do something about this. And your brothers are like, boy, hush. You know, no, no, I need to talk to the king. I need to talk to the king. Because I heard that if somebody would volunteer to be the champion, there are good things. And, and look, he disrespected God. But God, we can't let God go out like this. Hold up, wait a minute. See, that's the first thing about this particular type of champion that David is. Goliath expected David to be the champion of the nation. Saul expected David to be the champion of Saul. David volunteered to be God's champion. <laughs> so, so the first thing that God wants in order for us to rock the world, in order to, for us to flood the world with love and hope and joy and gladness, in order for us to be used by God to prove that there's a God in Lawrence, Kansas, in, in, in order for us to be able to prove to the world that there's a God in the United States of America, that there's a God on the continent of North America, that there's a God on planet Earth who sees, who hears, and who delivers. In order for that to happen, we got to be a different kind of champion. Look, church, if you know you've been called to missionary work, but you've been spinning your work 
wheels because you've been trying to be come the new Mother Teresa. First of all, you ain't Indian. Second of all, you ain't Catholic. Third of all, you ain't a nun. So why are you trying to put on somebody else's armor? Maybe God called you to be a missionary. Maybe God called you to do missionary work, but maybe God didn't call you to be Mother Teresa. Maybe God just called you to be you. Pick up your stones. Pick up your cling, your, your sling. Put on your sack. Use the tools that God has been gifting you with your whole entire life. Use what God has already showed you that God used. Use this to deliver, to heal, and restore. If you're going to be a different kind of champion, stop trying to be somebody else. Be who God called you to be. Use what God called you to use and you will discover that giants still fall. You will discover that there is a God who heals and who sees, who repurposes and that can use your little bitty stuff that you thought was insignificant to rock the world. Look church, simply put, Whatever it is that God has put on your heart. Amen. If God's put a song on your heart and you ain't sung it because other folk in the church sing it better. No, they don't. They just sing it different. Seriously. You know that saying? The grass is always greener on the other side. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Grass is green. Sometimes grass is lime green. Sometimes grass is hairy green. Sometimes grass is hunter green, but all grass is green. That's the nature of grass. So why are you trying to be a shade of green that God never created you to be? Why don't you just celebrate the greenness that God has made you? Why are you trying to be a witness for God, to be a champion for God, and molding yourself along somebody else's image instead of allowing God to show you the kind of champion that God needs you to be. Because the truth is, you are not a champion for Christianity. You are not a champion for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. You are not a champion for St. Luke. You are a champion for God. And if God says that you can make a giant fall, you better watch that giant fall. <laughs> Because the truth is, there is nothing that God ever calls us to. The truth is, there's nothing that God ever puts on our heart. The truth is, there's nothing that God ever puts on our mind that God also doesn't prepare for us to accomplish, not just well, but godly well. Look, got one more thing and I'm done. We can lose with the stuff that folk convince us we have to use. But we can never lose with the stuff that God tells us to use. God needs a different kind of champion. Are you willing to be a different kind of champion? God needs a different kind of champion. Are you willing to be a different kind of champion. God needs a different kind of champion. Are you willing to be a different kind of champion? Because the truth is, all God needs to make sure that giants fall is some ordinary people who are willing to place their ordinary selves and their ordinary stuff in God's hands. This church is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God. Here's one of those other moments of the service that I love. Um, it's 
invitation time, it's decision time. This is the moment in the service where I get to offer you an opportunity to make a decision for God. So you ready? Here's the first decision that you can make. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if you've never given God a chance to show you what it's like to be loved and cared and comforted by a God who never fails and who never goes on vacation, I give you Jesus. Um, it's, it's really not that complicated. You, you could say a prayer something like this. You could say, Lord, I've heard the joyful sound that you say. I didn't think you meant me, but I just discovered today in these moments that not only do you use ordinary people, but, 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 but you're interested in remaking and remolding me into a champion for you. And, and if you're down with that, God, I'm down with it too. So, so forgive me for all the times where, where I discounted you. Forgive me for all the times where I listened to the noise and the chatter instead of listening to your voice. God, I am sorry and I am ready to welcome you in. Jesus, save me, amen. If you prayed that prayer or anything like it, I want you to know that you have received the gift of salvation and today is your Holy Ghost birthday and we celebrate one more one more, one more person that hell has lost and heaven has gained. Um, if you're among us today and you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a perfect one, it doesn't exist. But if you're looking for a fellowship of believers who are committed to becoming the different kinds of champions that God needs, who are committed to grasping hold to a hope in a God who never fails and never disappoints, who are just trying to be the best they can be for God themselves and the world. St. Luke might be the spot for you. And if so, there's a process that you can go through to make informed consent and choose to be a member of this fellowship. If that's the case, you can come forward. Um, you can also, if you're with us virtually, you can send something in the chat. Um, you can slip a note in the mail slot. You can email us and we'll reach out to you and walk you through the process of becoming a part of this church. And if the decision that, that you wanna make today is you want special prayer, seriously, y'all give me an excuse to pray. Would anybody like special prayer today? All right, let's pray.
close out our service today. Um, I, I really want to thank everyone who is chosen to spend time with God, chosen to be part of the service today. And as we prepare to close out the service, uh, we're going to sing praise God from whom all blessings flow as we stand, and then I'm gonna give us a special closing benediction. Are you ready? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord God and Lamb of God, you promised that giants would fall. You, you promised that if we would be the different kind of champion that you needed, that no eye would see, no ear would hear the kinds of things that you would do in the world. So right now, God, we're asking that you would embolden us and empower us to be the different kind of champions that you need. But most of all, God, we're asking that you would be God that you would surround us with your love, that you would uplift us with your strength, that you would comfort us with hope and joy and peace. And that when we leave this place, we leave empowered and gifted to share your love with others. That's really Go good. God, church. Amen. 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 Thank Take you for care, the everybody. Word, Lord, or that, uh, uh, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. All right. Have a blessed week. Thank you so you much. You too. Search